All right, sports fans. We got here, I got a golf cart. Interesting thing about golf carts is uh, I can't think of anything else where when they're sold new, almost 100% of their sales goes for their intended purpose, you know, to get people around on golf courses. But then when they're used, almost 0% is used for that purpose. Uh, most of them get used for people either at campsites or on their own property just bombing around. And when you're using a golf cart for a uh, purpose other than playing golf, uh, you usually have to add a few things to it. Uh, first of all, a light kit. Uh, you don't do much golfing at night, so that's totally unnecessary on their original sale. Um, the other thing too, you tend to haul other people, so you put on a seat kit. And uh, that's a... Uh, that really improves the functionality of these things because uh, most of them, they're not only a seat, but uh, you can fold it down into a flat bed, which I really like. Uh, it really increases its usefulness, especially if you're using it for yard work. I even built uh, some uh, plywood sides for that so uh, you can put stuff on there without it falling off. So two real good additions to a golf cart when you're using it for other than its intended original purpose of getting around on a golf course. Uh, last thing it needs uh, would be a radio. So we're going to put one of them on. Now I ordered this radio and console from an outfit called Cartoons off of Amazon. And it was about 300 bucks. They got some more expensive ones, but I think this is going to do everything it, I need it to do. It comes with a a dual brand. That's not the best brand in the world, uh, stereo, but it's going to be good enough for me. Uh, you know, 240 watts, it says, so um, that ain't too bad. And it's got uh, the USB input. This unit doesn't even have a CD player on it, but you know what? I, I got several things with CD players and I never even use them. So, this is going to do everything I need it to do, I assume. Uh, most importantly, this unit came with its own console and, uh, well, this cartoons out that they make the consoles. And this is the most important thing. How do you, you're going to put a radio on something, how do you, uh, How do you get it on your machine and still have it look decent? That, that's probably the trickiest part of the job. So uh, I'll get this out of the plastic wrap and we'll take a look at it. All right, the main reason I bought this unit, like I said, it's about 300 bucks, is because it's got a decent looking console. And I mean, I got radios and I got speakers, but I'd have to spend time making this console and that would burn up a lot of time and I just don't have it. Uh, I think it's a fairly decent looking unit. Um, I think it's going to do the job quite well for for me. I think they got a little overkill on the fuses. Um, they say you're supposed to uh, put on this uh, uh, fuse on the power line, which would, in most cases would make a lot of the sense. And they give you plenty of plenty of wire here. Uh, for making your hookup, that's kind of nice. And they they say you should put this uh, inline fuse on the power line. But it's also got a fuse on the back of the console here. See, it's got a fuse right there. It says that's 10 amp. The inline fuse is 10 amp. These things here must be for additional speakers, which is kind of cool. It'd be really easy to wire up additional speakers. Okay, and it also says it has a 10 amp fuse on the radio. Um, to me, that seems like like overkill. Um, so, 12 volt power source is a fuse on the battery. Okay, 10 amp fuse on the rear of the console, like I showed you. And also another 10 amp fuse on the radio. Um, now, the thing about fuses is, if you hook them up in series, it's not going to help anything. It doesn't 
I don't see how that gives you any extra protection. So I'm kind of mystified there. I'm going to follow their instructions though and put this inline fuse in just because they say so. But I really don't think it's necessary with those two other fuses on the unit already. This uh, golf cart, I already, like I said, I already put on the headlight kit. And uh, that headlight works. Those headlights work all the time, whether the key is on or not. Um, whether the key is in the ignition or not, the headlights work all the time, which is rather stupid. I can't think of when you'd use the headlights when you don't have the, when you're not actually driving the cart, which is when the keys would be on. But I could easily see somebody during the day just pulling the headlight switch, just monkeying around. And since it's daylight, you wouldn't notice the lights were on and thereby killing the battery. The, the radio seller says that you should hook it up directly to the battery, and I agree with that because I want to be able to run the radio whether the key is turned on or in the ignition of this golf cart or not. So when we're camping or by a fire, we can just turn on the radio and just let her run, and we don't have to worry about, let's say, if we didn't want the kids using the cart, we could take the keys out so we have the advantage there. And when you're camping, you wouldn't have to worry about someone driving off with the cart, but that way you can play the radio without you know, having to watch the cart the whole time. But I am going to make it so these headlights only work when the ignition key is on. Because that way you won't have a situation where someone's driving during the day and for whatever reason they turn on the headlights. And then they go park it in the sun, forget the headlights are on and kill the battery. So that's what we're gonna do with this. All right, I mocked this thing in here with bungee cords. Just to see what I thought of it. And that's the main reason I bought it, just so you have a nice way of having the radio mounted. And when I have the wires tucked up, you're not going to be able to notice them. Most people stand on the roof like this, so you're not going to have a bunch of wires hanging down. I like that. We'll end up running the wires down along this bar here and then to the battery. Um, inside here, it's not too inconvenient. For the driver, the passenger to use the controls, I kind of like that. The thing I don't like is, is that this unit seems to be, well, you can see it from the side here. The thing I don't like is it slants up, the unit's slanted up, so it's kind of slanted away from the driver and the passenger's vision. And I could do something about that, but I'm not gonna. It's not like I'm driving a car on the road. These things are used for when you're going pretty slow and usually the radio is going to be used when I'm stopped. I can see the display. I can see the controls. So even though it's angled a little bit away from my line of sight, um, I like it tucked up there tight. I could modify it so it's slanted down at me, but I'm not going to do that. It's, it's good enough for who it's for. It's doing all the things I wanted. I wanted to have a fairly attractive way to have the radio. I didn't, didn't just want to have a bare radio st sit, sitting out and you know, separate speaker mounts. This is the speakers are enclosed. The speakers came with it. Uh, it seems to me like it's going to be a pretty good deal to me. So I'm going to get going on getting this thing hooked up here. All right, this unit comes with some hardware to mount it. It's got the stove bolts there with washers. If you were to uh, be mounting it on a like a metal surface, uh, I got this uh, plastic roof, and it's got some ribbed ribbed parts of it. And, it's kind of a hollow uh, rib. This will be ideal for these sheet metal screws they gave supplied for mounting it, and it should be fairly easy. What I'm going to do, what I plan on doing, is I'm going to right through this lip and through these uh, hollow ribs. Uh, I'm going to just run some screws up through and hold her on. Then after that, it's pretty much just a matter of hooking the red wire here to the hot and. Uh, the black wire to the to the ground and that's that's all there is to it so you couldn't hardly get easier now that I got the radio out of there my plan is is to uh, drill holes through the unit and then uh, screw it into this uh, the these ribs these reinforcement ribs on this uh, roof here now on the center two I'd like to do them too but that is right where the radio itself kind of sticks out. I don't even know how I could get a screwdriver in to put the screw in. I suppose I could use a hex head 
uh, screw and turn it into a wrench. I'm gonna see if I can get by with just four screws holding this thing on, though I'm gonna have to keep my eye on them, make sure they don't vibrate out. Plastic, though, a screw usually bites pretty good, and it's not particularly heavy, so that's what we're gonna do um, right here on this lip. I have marked where I'm gonna drill four holes, front and two on the front, two on the back, and uh, hopefully that will be all we need. So I will get going on that.